Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide, 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need this. You must have this book in front of you at all times when you're working on the problems with me. Today we'll begin our work on page number 348. The very first problem on page 348, number 24, as you can see, is already on the blackboard part of it. Let's, let's work on it. If at the end of the video you decide that this was helpful and that you would like to work with me, uh, that you would like to hire me as your tutor, you can always get, get hold of me at Keshwani Prep, P R E P, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Just send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Here's what is given to us. The question simply is, the question simply is, which of the following could be the equation on the line? They gave us four equations and here's the graph that they're giving us. I'm going to reproduce the graph, but obviously not every single detail, just some of the points. You understand? So here's the very first point that's already there. We are told that we are told that when x is 120, y is 60. The next one I'm going to give you is 140 right here. When x is 140, y we are told is 70 right here. I'm going to give you a couple of more. When x is 200, we are told that the y is 100. 200 right here, 100 right here, like this. And finally, we are told that when x is 300, y is 150. Y is 150 when x is 300. Somewhere up there. So it looks, it looks something like that. And we don't have to do this much work. We don't have to do this, this much work to realize what's going on here. This is plenty here. What do you see here in relation between x and y? As you can clearly see, y is always half of x. When x is 120, y is 60. When it's 140, it's 70. When it's 200, it's 100. When it's... So y is simply half of x. That's all it is. That's the relationship. That's your answer. y equals half of x. Number 25. Number 25. In number 25, we are given two simultaneous equations. Let's, let's put them on the blackboard first. And since I need some room, I'm going to put them from up here so that we have more room. Here's the first one. It says 2.4, this is number 25, 2.4x minus 1.5y, we are told equals 0.3. And the second equation we have is 1.6x, we are told, plus 0.5y equals negative 1.3. Let's work on them. And the question is, what's the value of x? They just want us, they just want us to find, solve this thing for value, value of x. That's all it is. Let's see what we can do, shall we? The first thing we notice is that this is all in decimal. 2.4, 1.5, 0 0.3. Why don't we multiply the whole bloody thing by 10? If we multiply the whole equation by 10, we don't have to deal with the decimals. Let's do that. If we multiply everything by 10, it's going to become 24x minus 15y equals 3. So far so good. The second thing we notice after after having multiplied the whole thing by 10, second thing we notice is that this is the multiple of 3, this is the multiple of 3, this is the multiple of 3. Let's divide the entire equation by 3. If we divide the entire equation by 3, this is going to become 8x minus 5y equals 1. Let's move on to this one. Same thing, multiply the whole equation by 10, we'll get 16x plus 5y equals negative 13. Do you notice something? You should notice something. What we notice here is that we have a negative 5y, we have a positive 5y. Voila! Life is very simple now. Let's simply take this equation and subtract it from, add it to that equation. 16x plus 5y equals negative 13. Negative 5y, positive 5y, we can cancel out. We are adding the two here, obviously. So we can have 24x equals negative 13 and a positive 1 is negative 12. Divide both sides by 24. Divide both sides by 24, you will find that x equals negative 1 half. And that's all there is. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's move on to number 26. Number 26 says, that the population at the beginning 
was 310 and as we, as we discussed a couple of times before in the previous video this is read as T naught N-A-U-G-H-T that's how it's read some people read this as T0 but the proper way is to read it as T naught we are told that after that is to initially the population is 310 we are told that then it goes up it, it goes up by 1% each year and we simply have to identify the right equation so let's begin at T0 it is 310 at the end of the first period initial period rather at the end of the first year the population will be whatever you started out with 310 310 and then it increased by 1% so it will be 101% of 310 101% 101% is simply written as 1.01 what happens there at the, at, at, the end, at, at the end of the following period at the end of the following period we'll have 110% we'll have 110% of this amount I know I don't need to do this thing this is too childish you probably know this already by now but there you go what we notice is that at T2 at T2 we have 1.01 and 1.01 1.01 squared times 310 at the end of the 10th period, I don't, I don't mean to say 10th period, at the end of the nth period, at the end of the nth period, and typically it's written as a small n, not capital N, it will simply be 1.01 raised to n times 310, because 310 is what we started out with. There you go, that's it. Let's put it on the top now, the final, final, the final product as they want you to write it. So here I, I wrote the entire thing in terms of n, they're writing it in terms of t, t for time. And this is what it looks like. So the population that we have is a function of time, obviously. Population is a function of time, because how much population you have depends on how much time has lapsed. The, the long, more time it has lapsed, the more greater the population, because obviously it's growing by 1% every period. And that population is a period of time, uh, is, is a function of time, and it's equal to 310, right here, 310 times 1.01 raised to t. The only difference is that I use the letter n to represent the period. I use the letter n here in my work to represent the period. Then I realized when I looked at the answer choices that they're using t to represent time. It's the same exact thing. It's the exact same thing. The answer is d. Let's look at the next one, number 27. Number 27 says, two-third times 9x minus 6 minus 4 is equal to 9x minus 6. And 9x minus 6. And the question is, what's the value of three x minus two? 3x minus 2. Notice that they're not looking for they're not looking for the value of x. They're not asking us how much is x. They're asking us what's the value of 3x minus 2. So you could sit there and solve this entire thing for x and then once you have the value of x put it in here but that'll be silly. That'll be a waste of time. There's a quicker way. Here's what's going on. You, you should notice something. You notice that this is 9x. This is 3x. is 3 times the amount. This is 6. This is 2. This is 3 times the amount. 9 and 6, they have a common factor of 3. Let's take them out common. Let's take out the common factor of 3 and we'll end up with 3x minus 2 inside. You see, 3x minus 2. And then we have minus 4. Let's do the same thing here. 3 times 3x minus 2. The next thing we notice is that we have a 3 outside here, we have a 3 at the bottom. Let's, let's cross them out. And now what we have is, we have 2 times, I'm going to put them in a different color. We'll have, we have 2 times this guy here, 2 times this guy, on this side, 2 times this guy, and on this guy we have 3 times this guy, what we are solving for. So if we subtract, I'm not going to actually do it out, but if we subtract 2 times 3x minus 2 from both sides, 2 times 3x minus 2 will drop out from here, will appear here, which means negative 4 equals 
3 times 3x minus 2 minus 2 times this is just 3x minus 2. Voila. Did you understand it? And if you didn't understand it, if you had trouble following it, I'm going to redo it. What I want you to do is um, think of this as a different variable. Think of this as a y and think of this as a y. So we have 2 times y minus 4 equals 3 times y. And then this is plus obvious. Subtract, subtract this quantity from both sides. It's going to drop out and negative 4 equals 3y minus 2y, which is just y. And our y is our y is 3x minus 2. The answer is negative 4. And that's answer choice A. Let's move on. Number 28. Number 28, let's see what this is about. Oh, it's about a bloody parabola. We are given an equation of a parabola. We are told that y is a function of x, which is x plus 3 times x minus k. And then we are told that k is positive. k is a positive integer. That is a very important information. It's a very important information, the fact that it is positive. It will come in handy in a second, you will see. Let's begin the story. So, we just want to be able to identify the four, bar four parabola that they give us in the answer choice A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. We just want to identify it and that's all we are interested in. The quickest way, the most economical way here, is to simply look at the intercept. First look at the x-intercept, then look at the y-intercept, and that's all we need here. Let's start with x-intercept. At x-intercept, if you have a parabola, or anything, you know, if it, if the place where it cuts x-axis, the place is where it, where it cuts x-axis, y is equal to 0. So let's set this thing. Let's set this thing equal to 0. Let's set y equal to 0. And that will give us x plus 3 times x minus k equal to 0. Because that's what y is. y is equal to this quantity, let's set it equal to 0 like this. So that we can find where it cuts the x-axis. Okay, pay attention here. So this implies that it cuts the x-axis. This parabola cuts the x-axis at two places where x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to k. Now since we do not know the value of k, that information is not very useful other than the fact that it's positive. But other than that, we don't really know what it is. This is what we have to look at. If you look at the answer choices, answer choice Answer is not, answer is not, it's not B, because B cuts at negative 2. The answer is not B, because if you look at the answer choice B, very carefully, you will see that it cuts the x-axis at negative 2. What the shape of the parabola is, we really don't care. It has to cut at negative, it has to cut at negative 3, answer choice B does not. Answer B is not the answer. Also, if you look at carefully, you will see that C is not the answer. C cuts the parabola at negative 2. We wanted to cut at negative 3. So we only narrowed down to two answer choices, A, B, C, D. We know it's not B, it's not C, it's either A or D. Now, to narrow down further, we'll look at the other intercept, the y-intercept. We already know, we already took care of this thing. Let's see what it cuts this thing. Shall we? No. The place where it cuts the y-axis, the place where the parabola cuts y-axis, whether, whether it's upside down or whether it's right side up, it doesn't matter. The place where it cuts the y-axis, along this y-axis obviously, x is equal to 0. So if we set x equal to 0 in this equation, we'll have our y-intercept. Let's do that. So we know y is equal to x plus 3, x minus k. Set, set x equal to 0, right here. Set x equal to 0 in here. And that will give us the place where it cuts the y-axis. Okay, stay with me. If x is equal to 0, we get positive 3 times x is equal to 0, we get negative k. Well, positive 3 obviously is a positive quantity. k is a positive quantity. And we have a negative in front of it. You with me so far? We are told that k is positive. That's why it was a very important information. If k is positive, the negative k is a negative quantity itself. I'm making too much fuss about it. Let's, let's, let's not do baby steps. K is positive. K is positive. The negative times positive is going to be negative. 
which means the y-intercept, whatever it is, has to be a negative quantity. It's a product of positive and negative. It has to be a negative quantity, which means if they're telling you two choices there, if you look at the parabola very carefully, in answer choice A, it cuts, it cuts at a place where the y-intercept is positive. It, it, according to what work we have done here, it must cut the y-axis at a negative value. The answer is D. And that's all we need. That's all we need. There are, I know, many other ways of solving this problem, but that, that requires memorization. You have to remember what each variable signifies, what represents what, and I don't like it do it because I don't want to go around memorizing things. I find it very annoying. Just look at it. Just use your common sense. And obviously, when, do, when you're doing it yourself, it goes much faster because then you're not explaining to anybody, you're not trying to teach anybody, you just use your common sense. It's a matter of seconds. It takes a matter of seconds. Set it equal to zero, solve for y-intercept. Set, set, set y equal to zero, solve for x-intercept, and that's what it is. We'll stop right here. That is, that is the end of that page number 28. We'll stop right here, and we'll pick up from where we left off. At number uh, Tomorrow we'll pick up from question number 29. Okay? Again, as I said before, if you wish to get hold of me, you can always do so by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.